I do those things over a long enough period of time, my agency went from just me being a producer to over a hundred people producing and a couple hundred thousand dollar a month agency. We're going to be talking about how to use the story of the toaster to get anything that you want out of life, out of business, out of sales, guys. And today, at the end of the video, I'm going to go over one of my biggest tips and hacks for new salespeople and new entrepreneurs in the space, guys. All right, guys, let's get right into it here today. Guys, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to figure out what we want out of where we're going, okay? I'm going to give you an example, right? I'm going to talk to you guys about three different concepts and three different perspectives inside of business and just my life that I find important, right? So the first one's going to be selling. The second one is going to be building my business and my sales agency, my insurance agency. And the third one is going to be my fitness, okay? So those are the three main areas that we're going to go over. Before we get into that, guys, I'm going to tell you guys a quick 30-second story, the story of the toast so you guys have an idea of it. A couple hundred years ago, guys, there's a bunch of cavemen. The cavemen are out there. They love bread because everybody loves bread and they're trying to figure out how to make toast. They want to eat it because they want a little crunch to the food, right? So they're, they create a fire. They're over the fire with the bread and they're holding it above the fire and the bread is sometimes catching on fire and the flame goes up and it catches the bread on fire and they got to start all over. Sometimes the wind comes in and it blows the flame out. And sometimes they burn their hands. Right? There's all these uncontrollable variables. A couple hundred years goes by, these guys get a little bit smarter. They still are trying to figure out how to make toast because they love bread and they want a little bit of toast. So they're still trying to figure it out. So they're lighting a flame onto an end of a stick and they're using it kind of like a candle to warm the bread, to create the toast. It's starting to work, but there's still some uncontrollable variables. Sometimes the flame goes out, they drop the stick, they burn their hand, the, the whole piece of bread catches on fire. Guys, now today, in today's time, we have a toaster. What would you guys think about that? We have a toaster, we just put the bread in, I push the button down, about 30 seconds, 45 seconds goes by, I get to hang out, a little bit of magic happens inside that little box, and boom, toast pops out. So the point is, is that we know exactly what to do with the toaster. Everything else, they're guessing. They're trying things out. It's theory. It's test and trial mode. Our goal is to figure out what we want out of where we want to go. And I'm going to give you guys the example of sales, building an agency or a sales organization, as well as fitness and my health, right? This is, what I, this is how I use it. So what I do is I go, okay, I want to sell $30,000 in premium this month. I want to sell $50,000 in premium this month. So what am I gonna do? Well, I know that when I call these leads this many times, it results in a sale. So when I call these leads this many times, I get a sale, my commission is a thousand bucks. So if I call these leads this many times and, I'm, and I get to make a sale, when I hit this number, I make this much money, I gotta do that, and, and, that, and that sale results me in a thousand dollar commission, then I need to do that 50 times. How can I break that down within a month? I want my inputs in my business to be directly correlated with my outputs. I don't want to be guessing. I want it to be like the toaster. I put my bread in and I push the button down. I know toast is popping up on the other side of this. I know in my business when I buy this, these leads and I make this amount of phone calls and I treat them all like this and I have the conversations the way I'm supposed to, I make this many sales when I hit this many phone calls on average every single time. Right? Same thing with building an agency, guys. I'm gonna sell, train, and recruit. If I can do those three things over a long period of time, I know that those three things are gonna help my agency grow over a long time horizon. I'm not gonna sneeze my way into a big business. I'm not gonna accidentally wake up and have a giant industry shattering business, but I am going to, every single day, move the football down the field, just a little bit by little bit by little bit. And those big things, these things that we choose are gonna be the biggest drivers in where we wanna go. And I'm gonna challenge you, if you're watching this right now, to go grab a pen and piece of paper and write down three areas, maybe five areas that you find very important in your life and figure out what the biggest needle movers are in those areas. Because if you can do that and you can identify those, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how chaotic, how stressful, how many problems you gotta solve, how insanely difficult your day was, if you can check those three boxes every single day for the next 90 days, for the next six months, you know that you're moving in the right direction. Right, here's another example with fitness, guys. If I know that I'm training for a half Ironman right now, and I'm trying to get in better shape with cardio, but I also wanna put on muscle, I know that I gotta eat clean, I know that I gotta uh, get in the weight room, and I have to be doing my cardio. So those three things are gonna be my main areas of focus. If I can do those three things consistently over a long enough amount of time, I know that generally I'm gonna be moving in the right direction. Okay, maybe I wanna put on 15 pounds, maybe I wanna lose 25 pounds, right? What do I gotta do? eat 500 less calories than I am right now and eat cleaner foods and also go do cardio five days a week. That's more than I was doing before. I know that's gonna help me get to where I wanna go for the next three weeks. Cool, let's start there, right? 
And if you can do that and you can run that play, you can sit in that sweet spot and I call it the toaster story because I'm gonna put this in and I'm gonna run the play and I'm gonna let the toaster do the work and then on the other end, a little bit of magic is gonna come out. And it's not as easy as putting bread in, inside of a toaster, but it's the same concept. I've seen this happen in my own life in selling when I'm like, hey, I wanna figure out how to become a good salesperson, so I need to learn the skill. I need to learn this industry. I need to learn the business. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna get on all the training calls that my company offers. I'm gonna practice my script every single day, and I'm gonna go over my objections every single day, and I'm gonna constantly check in and plug in with the people who are ahead of me. That's what got me off the ground in sales. With business and growing my agency and actually getting to the next level inside of business, I knew that I needed to get new information, so I had to start learning and trying to explore for it by asking people, studying, watching videos, reading books, different things like that buying courses, paying people to teach me, right? Different things that are gonna get me the information. And I learned that selling, training, recruiting, those are the big three buckets inside of building a sales organization. And there's a ton of other stuff. There's culture, the community. You gotta onboard people the correct way. You have to make sure that uh, you have a good retention ratio by, you know, there's a lot of different things that go into that bucket, but uh, good culture, good community. You're setting expectations properly. You are doing the recruiting properly. You're telling people on the front end what it's actually gonna look like for you. You're explaining the opportunity, right? You're getting people to believe in themselves by painting the picture of what can actually happen. You're trying to build their belief in the product that they're selling so they can have an easier time selling. You're trying to train them, right? So there's all these different things, but the biggest three things inside of building a sales organization organization that I found through my experience, if you can recruit people, you can train the people, and then you can uh, also do the selling in front of them and be the example and set the standard to them so they know what's possible. Sell, train, and recruit, big three things, right? If I do those things over a long enough period of time, my agency went from just me being a producer to over 100 people producing and a couple hundred thousand dollar a month agency, right? I didn't do that, that many complicated things, but I ran that play for a long time. Fitness, same thing, man. I put on 30 pounds of muscle over the past, like right when I got out here to Arizona, I was like 100 and, I was like 163 pounds, I think. And I was like really skinny. I was just like fit, kind of like not, not strong, but just like kind of fit. And then I met Andy and Andy made me get in the gym and I was like, all right. So I ran the play. I ate more calories. I ate a lot of protein and I gained like about 25, 30 pounds and I am now really fit, right? Same thing. Run the play, sit in that sweet spot. You don't want to change the play. A lot of people, they get into sales, they get into business and they're like, man, this is kind of difficult. Let's jump into this new thing, this other, we're going to try this other avenue. Maybe I sell insurance and I'm like doing telesales over the phone. And then I'm like, man, um, you know, I'm selling all these products right now and I'm going to try to buy a lead to this completely different product because I heard one story about someone else having success doing it. That sounds way easier. I'm going to go do that. And then you're like, man, this is kind of tough. Like I'm going to go try to do in-home appointments instead of telesales because like this doesn't work. And then I'm in home. And then like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sitting in the pocket long enough to find the success. I'm going to have to build my skill set and develop myself and my business. And that takes time. The one thing guys, this is so important. The one thing in business and fitness and health and your relationship and just developing you as a person and personal development and growth and, and everything else that you're trying to go after in life, Guys, there's two huge things that can fast track your way there once you understand this. It's time and volume of the thing. I wanna get great at selling, what do I gotta do? Sell stuff, sell, right? I don't want to have it sit there and be like, I'm just gonna figure out the magic trick and then like, I'm great at sales because that's not how it works. So what I wanna do is I wanna practice every single day and I wanna sell so I can learn how to overcome obstacles, objections, different things that people are going through and being able to understand their situation and, their, and the, the product that I'm selling. And that takes time, right? The only way that you fast track the time is by doing more volume, right? So time and volume. I can either do it for a long time, for sure I know I'm gonna get there if I do all the right things. If I wanna speed up the time, I do way more volume. I hammer in on it because that will, if you do double the volume, it'll cut the time in half. If you do triple the volume, it'll cut the time down by three, okay? So I'm gonna revert here. The story of the toaster is you want to know what your inputs are to get your expected outputs. If I, if I wanna make 40 grand this month, I wanna know exactly how many phone calls I gotta make, I wanna know exactly how many conversations I gotta have, I wanna know exactly how many presentations I gotta have, right? If I'm trying to build a sales team to a million dollars a month, I, I wanna know exactly how many people I gotta have, I wanna know exactly how many 
uh, people I have to recruit. I want to know exactly how many training calls. Maybe I, I got to get people on. What are the ratios? What do I what do I got to do to get the people to that point and investing in them to, to hit those numbers? It's simple math, right? And then you got to run the play. You got to run the play, sit in that pocket until you get there. You want your inputs to be directly correlated with the outputs, which they are, but you just got to find those numbers. You got to figure out what those numbers are. So then you can start to run that play to hit those numbers, right? Fitness, same deal. I'm trying to, you know, get, get, I'm not trying to lose or gain weight, but I'm just trying to increase my cardiovascular um, health, I guess is what it would be called. And I'm trying to be able to run, run longer distances, bike longer distances and swim longer distances while staying at my same weight that I'm at right now. Right? So I'm, I'm running the play. I'm doing the things that I know that I need to do to get to where I want to go. And the question is, are you guys? So with your pen and piece of paper, write down the main three areas, main five areas that you want to improve in your life and write a goal out, right? Maybe it's a six month play. Maybe it's a four month play. Maybe it's an eight month play. I don't know the exact timeline, but I think that you should set a timeline so you do have a looming deadline in the back of your head and you should look at that every single day you should, for all your areas and be like, man, this is where I'm going. This is where I'm going to get to. This is where I'm going to get to. And you'll start to figure out that you're just kind of putting yourself in alignment with where you want to go, which is a different topic. But you're also going to then write out exactly what you need to do in those different categories in those different areas to start to move yourself there, right? What are the biggest things that like, let's say that you had the craziest day and like you didn't get to do a lot of work that day because you're helping putting out fires for the other salespeople on your team and you're helping other people sell. But like if you could just drum it down to like three to five main tasks in each of those areas that you could check the box on, if you just got those things done, you move the needle in your business, what are they? You move the needle in your sales, what is it? How many follow-up calls? How many follow-up text messages? How many brand new calls? How many brand new leads did you gener generate? How many brand new recruits did you get today? How many people did you check in with? How many training, how many people did you have on a training call? How much did you run? What did you eat clean, right? Like these are the areas where you gotta find three to five things in those different areas where you're like, these definitely move the needle, right? So guys, as promised in the beginning of the video, I told you guys I was gonna give one of the biggest tips that I've learned for new people in sales and new people in entrepreneurship. Here it is. It's belief, okay? If I believe what I'm saying, I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. Sales is not all about me selling, right? I'm not selling, I'm not pitching people. I'm trying to get people to believe that I believe what I'm talking about. I'm trying to get them to believe that I believe. If I can make them believe that I believe, dude, game over. They're like, this guy is sold on this thing. This guy knows that it works. This guy knows something that I don't. What's the disconnect? Where is it? Do they just not believe? Well, if they talk to me, man, they're going to believe because I know that this works. I've seen it. I've, I've had to pass out death claims. I've had to call insurance companies and get them to pay out claims for clients that I've sold policies to. I know that these people need it. We're all going to die, right? That's my attitude when I sell an insurance policy. I have that in the back of my head because I know that these people need it. Right? I know that real financial can change your life. I know that because it's totally changed my life. I know that the insurance industry, I know sales in general can change your life, but the people that are watching this video or someone that I'm recruiting or talking to, right? They might not think that at the beginning, the person that I'm selling, right? My prospect, my client, they might not believe that right now, but once they talk to me, dude, game over. They're going to see it in me. I'm going to be like, dude, this business did change my life. I'm making more money than I've ever made before. I'm having more impact than I've ever had before. The system is clear. The process is clear. I'm just walking down the path and running the play. It's not that hard. You can do it too. I did it with no sales experience, dropped out of college, no business experience either. Right? So that is my belief level towards my opportunity. So when people talk to me, man, they go, their belief rises. And then they're like, okay, man, you, you got me. I'm in. What do I got to do? How do I start to get the most out of this opportunity? Just like you have. Right? And so the belief is the most important thing. Sales is not about me pitching you a certain way. Sales is not about me trying to swindle you into saying yes. So then you regret it tomorrow. Sales is about getting everybody to the same belief level. And if you can, there's a threshold. And at this point, under this, this hand right here, under this bar, the prospect's money is more important than, it, than the solution, right? So you're trying to get them to trade their money for the solution because if, they're, if their belief level, I'm gonna use this hand as my belief level, once the belief level hits this amount, the product is more important. But right now it's all about the money to them, right? They don't wanna spend the money for the solution because they don't believe because you're not getting them to believe in what you're actually selling. And if you can just make people believe based off of your conviction and your confidence about what you're selling, what you're trying to help people with, you will sell more units, more products than you know what to do with and you'll make way more money, right? But it's not something that you can fake.
So I recommend that you guys go out there and you look up a couple of stories or testimonials about your product or service or just use it and get the results yourself so that, you know, like insurance, you can't really do that. So I would look up some testimonials. But if you're someone that like, you know, is selling a coaching program or a fitness package, like use the thing so you believe in it. If I did a fitness package and I'm totally working with a company and it's within, you know, Andy Elliott's company, uh, it's called Earn It All, Elliott Group Fitness Division, right? I know that those guys can get me jacked. Like I, I'm, an, I'm a product of it. So for me, I'm like, dude, everyone that talks to me, I'm like, dude, you better be working with these guys. You wanna get in shape, dude, just call them. They'll, they'll tell you what to do. I don't even work for them, but I know that their stuff works, right? So I'm a huge believer in it. So when people talk to me, I'm like, dude, Aaron Williamson, the guy who trained like The Rock and, and Zac Efron and all them, yeah, he got me an eight pack and I'm like 188 pounds and I can run like eight miles. I know, it's crazy. I'm like doing all this, sh this crazy stuff and it's all because I'm just taking care of my health and my nutrition and I'm following a training program, right? So it's like, it's very simple, right? My belief is so high. People are like, oh shit, like he's a product of it. So if you're not getting the results that you want, if you're not where you want to be, raise your belief, raise your standard on how much you believe in what the thing is that you're selling and actually use the thing and get some results or you might not be selling the right thing if you can't and you, know, you don't know anybody who's actually getting any results on the stuff that you're selling, guys. Guys, if you like this video, share it with a friend. Um, follow me on Instagram, Tyler underscore Glennon. And guys, don't forget to subscribe. We're pumping out content and trying to help people along the journey from where they are to where they want to go. Teaching everybody everything that I've been able to learn in my journey thus far. And if it helps you, feel free to send us a thumbs up. And if you want to see me make a video about anything specific, drop it in the comments, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Man, if this is the video that helped you out today, I'm going to place a couple other of my videos right here for you guys to watch. It's exactly what you're going to need to see following today's video, guys. See you in the next one.